marriage belongs to God. It's not just a tradition. Next, marriage is between one man, one woman, and God. This is important. Marriage is not between two people. It's between three. And I, again, I never thought I would ever have to say this, but I'm going to say this. Marriage is between one biological human man. I do have to say human now. And one biological human woman with the one true God. You with me? Don't look at me like that. That's what the Bible says. If, listen, if, if you want to be a Christian, you have to surrender your life to the lordship of Jesus. So you can pretend, you cannot agree with me. That's fine. You're not a Christian. That's what the Bible says. It's true. It's not just, it's not just true. It is, it is ultimately true. Next, marriage is a covenant and is, a, is designed to be permanent. Now, we're going to talk more about the idea of covenant on Thursdays. I want to encourage you to come. I'm not really sure if Pastor Keegan's going to make up the, the last message or if I'm going to catch it on the next week on Thursday, but I want to encourage you to be at Thursday. Um, but we're going to talk about this idea of covenant. It's very, very important. But the idea, about, suffice it to say today, it, it's designed to be till death do us part, for better or for worse, in sickness and in health. Okay, that's what it's designed to be. And, and this is important because our culture has moved so far away from it. There used to be something called wedlock. How many of you are old enough to understand that term? It's before like marriage. It was called wedlock. Well, think about that for a minute. You wed, and guess what? You're locked. <laughs> wed, locked. Ball and chain. That's how, that's, how, that's how it's meant to be. That's how it's meant to be. You know why? Because we want to do, it, we want to do life and build another way. But growth is not actually in keeping our options open. It's actually in limiting our options and living God's way. There's a way that seems right, keyword th- seems to man, but its way is death. So this is literally a, tr- a trend. This is, hap- this is happening in Canada now and all over Europe. They've changed the word of wedlock to wed lease. I'm not making it up. That's a normal thing. They are doing three, five, and 10 year leases in marriage where they can live, but that is what no fault divorce is, just so you know. It's the same idea. They just, they're just honest enough about it because they're so far from God in Europe. It's just, I mean, you know, they're just honest about it, but that's what it is. Okay, so God created marriage. God created marriage for multiplication. This, is, this next one, again, it's gonna be hard for someone because I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let you know if you know you're really a Christian or not. Genesis 1.28, God blessed them and said to them, I didn't say God blessed man. Didn't say God blessed woman. I said God blessed them. God blessed them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky and every creature that crawls on the earth. God chose to populate the human planet through marriage. For thousands of, Billions of people have come into existence because of the union of of one man, one woman. Uh, I would venture to say, because all of you are born, you are the outcome of a, it's crazy I even have to say it. I'm not going to say heterosexual cis relationship. I'm going to say normal relationship. I'm going to say normal, because that's actually what it is. You are all an outcome of that. God loves children. Children are a blessing. They're a blessing. Our world doesn't see that, doesn't profess that, and it's absolutely demonic. A couple things I want to know. Many people are asking, where is God? Where is God? It's so dark. And here's what I would ask you. Where was your post as a believer when Roe v. Wade was overturned? You know where God was? Saving babies from being slaughtered in the womb. That's where he was. Yeah. I'm going to say this, and remember, this is God. I'm going to love you no matter what. You can come. You, you can come. You can still participate. You can still be around. But don't pretend you're a Christian and say you're pro-choice because you're not. Amen. You're just not. And here's the thing. The Bible says, like, the truth sets you free. I, I'm not going to pick it. I'm not going to. I'm not. But, but I'm not going to lie to you. And unfortunately, pastors have cowered on this issue. I could not believe how many people that I knew in my life, pastors that lead massive, massive influential churches were quiet when that happened. Listen, I'm serious. If it was a kick to the gut, 
when Roe v. Wade was overturned, you are not saved. And if you are, you need to repent. And you know, repent just means change your mind. It's not complicated. It's not like we got to heap on coals on you. And that's not me heaping it on. That's the word of God. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is a biblical idea. And it's interesting, the people who want to be pro-choice, which is really pro-infanticide, that's what it is. 64 million babies have been aborted in the womb since Roe v. Made, murdered mercilessly. Where's God? Man, he's right there. The question is never, where's God? This is important for the believer. The question is never, where's God? The question is, where are you? What did God say to Adam and Eve? Do you think he really needed to know where they were? No, the question was for them. They sinned against him. They were shameful. They covered and they hid. And he asked this question. And I, I'm gonna, this is a question every believer has to ask. Where are you? 